Tana koutou katoa, a uh, koramini a te faka paparanga mai, a uh, kote fenua moe moe te waki tupu, ita to iwa te kau marua i haere mai au ki te aroa, ko au te aroa te kainga, no ototahi au, no tamaki makoro au, no otepoti au, a uh, kei wai kiri kiri au e noho ana ko wana Jones toku ikua, ko tene takumehi. Ki nga tangata whenua o te rohe nei, ko nai tuahuri um, me nai tahu whanui hoki, kamehi hoki o ki nga tohu o te rohe nei. Kia ora everybody, um, my name is Juana, I'm currently working at the uh, University of Canterbury as a lecturer in digital screen. Um, but I have been asked today to talk about um, my very convoluted way and how I ended up in the museums industry. So I'm going to give you a bit of a background um, about that. Anyway, so I work in immersive exhibits, um, specifically in planetariums and domes. I have a lot of experience. So what on earth is a planetarium? Anyway, it's this thing. Um, so this is a planetarium. It's a big domed room, um, projectors at the front and back. It's kind of like a VR experience that you can share with people. So it's um, inclusive of lots of different people. But I didn't start and wake up at the end of my year 13 and think I'm going to be a planetarium producer. That wasn't really something that I had planned to do. Instead, I went um, to high school and at the end of year 13, I'm like, I'm going to be a software developer. So I did that. And then I spent three years doing a degree in um, computer science and software development. Uh, ended up working on this very complex mining software for about eight months. Um, and whenever I explained it to people, I got this face. It's kind of the face you're all making now. Um, and I'm like, cool, that's really interesting. But what I actually want to do is inspire people. I want to talk to people. I want to get them excited about stuff. Um, and I want to produce things that move people. So um, in, while I was doing the software development, I decided in my spare time that I wanted to be a 3D artist. I wasn't very good at drawing. Um, so I figured if I went into 3D, it was a little bit easier. Um, and I started making some really rubbish 3D art um, and looked how to improve. So what I ended up doing after my eight month stint as a software developer, I moved to New Zealand um, and I made some better 3D art. I went and I studied, uh, I learned how to be a digital producer, how to do um, 3D graphics and retrained in that. And then I thought to myself, cool, I'm gonna work in a game studio. And a game studio picked me up and I worked on slot machines for about two years. Don't do gambling, it's bad. Um, but it taught me a lot. It was really cool because what, um, in essence, I was doing is working on these very small pieces of animation that taught me that I had to be fast, that things didn't have to be perfect to make an impact, and it taught me the entire pipeline of stuff from concept art all the way through all of the 3D aspects to the end when I did um, my compositing and put it all together. So these are some of the games that I worked on there. Um, while I was doing that, my husband uh, decided that he had too much spare time on his hands. It was before we had children. Um, so he decided to join the Astronomical Society. And unfortunately, I have a tendency of taking other people's hobbies and being better at them. <laughs> um, so I also joined the Astronomical Society. I'm like, this is really cool, but the telescope stuff is kind of boring. I just want to tell people cool things about astronomy. And when I went to the Astronomical Society, they had a planetarium there um, up in Auckland. I'd never seen a planetarium before. I thought it was pretty cool, this big dome thing. I'm like, I know how to make 3D. I know how to make animations and films. I'm going to make some stuff for this planetarium. And I was really lucky um, to get to work on this project. I thought it was a good gig at the time. It was unpaid, which you may have to do. Um, so they decided that they were going to do Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds. And you guys are probably too young for this, but I was massively into it when I was a little bit smaller. Um, and I got to do all the creature design for it. And essentially, it was like half stage show. So they had actors. And then we did all of the sets and the monsters and everything digitally up on the dome in the planetarium. It was really, really cool. I really enjoyed it. Um, didn't get paid, but that was OK. 
And then I'm like, well, I really want to understand how people put things onto domes. Um, how does it work? How does everything work? They weren't super keen on that. They did let me sit next to one of the presenters for about five minutes while I watched them press some buttons. And at that point, a job came up in Otago going, who wants to be a planetarium manager? And I'm like... <laughs> So I went over there and I wrote on my resume, I have experience using Digistar 5 <laughs> from that five minutes. Um, I got there, they put the software in front of me and they said, we'll give you five minutes to familiarize yourself with it. We know you already know how to do it and then we'll come back and you can show us some stuff. I panicked. Um, don't embellish on your CV unless you can follow through. I figured out how to turn everything on and fly to the sun. And at that point, I'm like, I'm not going to get this job. I don't know what I'm doing. And then the interviewer came over to me and he's like, great, you got it going. Um, can you, I don't know, fly me to the sun? So I'm like, yes, yes, I can. So I did that. And then as we were talking after that, I sort of got up and slowly walked away because I didn't want him to ask me to do anything else. And that was how I got into museums. Um, so when I started there um, as the museum expert, I was told, here is a circle and tape on the ground. This is your planetarium, except not there because we've put the tape in the wrong place. So over the course of about six months, we had to build the thing. Um, so we got contractors in, started completely from scratch, built a planetarium. Um, and I spent many, many years working there. Here's, here it is when it's finished. Um, as a full dome producer, so um, learning as I went and also being able to teach others and bring astronomy and all sorts of other content in that medium um, to the public in Dunedin. So this is the planetarium at Tahura Tago Museum. I tell everybody it's my first child. When my children are a bit older, they might take offense to that, but they're still little, so it's okay. Um, so it's a nine meter dome suspended from the ceiling on chains. It's got 20% void, which means it's kind of transparent. Um, and it uses two projectors, one at the front of the back, to make like one big domed picture. But, and there's the sort of what the projectors look like, except mine were at the front of the back. Um, but domes don't have to be like this. Um, I loved that job. It wasn't anything I was expecting to do in my life. And it gave me a really unique opportunity to be making films for people that I then got to present those films for. So I'd make a film. Um, and then I'd put it on the dome and then people would have to pay to come and see the film while I sat in the back and listened to them complain about it. I'm kidding. Nobody complained <laughs> about it. Uh, it was really good. I really loved it. I got to do some stuff in 3D. I told them I want a 3D planetarium and they're like, okay. Um, so we have the only 3D planetarium in the Southern Hemisphere um, down in Dunedin um, because I wanted a 3D planetarium. And I went on to make 12 full dome shows um, I've made five films, several projects for both VR and immersive galleries. Separate from that, I've done a dozen or so short films, two large-scale projection mapping projects, I'm about to do my third, and an augmented reality experience. Nowadays, I work a lot with other institutions and help them figure out what they want to do in their immersive exhibition space and give them help and advice. Planetariums don't have to be fixed like that. Um, this is a planetarium. I work on inflatable domes. Um, sometimes they have projectors inside of them, which is really cool. I work on big domes. Sometimes I work on small domes. Um, so that's a wok that somebody's painted white on the inside. As long as it's a dome, I'm happy. I work in my dome. And sometimes I play around with dome filming technology, which is really cool. Sometimes they let me out of my dome and I get to do dome adjacent technology. So this is a VR talk that we did um, with the California Academy in um, the States and uh, an augmented reality project I did on the right. Sometimes I do dome adjacent technology. So this is an immersive gallery that I worked on down in Dunedin. And sometimes they let me go outside, which is cool. Um, so this is our first Matariki um, projection mapping project that we did onto the building. And sometimes I get to make things for lots of people. So this was a project uh, for projection mapping that I did in Dunedin um, for the um, Midwinter Carnival. Um, and that was viewed by about 40,000 people on that evening, which was really cool. Um, sometimes I work with things completely unrelated to domes and immersive films. So I get to blow stuff up. I sometimes let to get to play with animals. Um, and we had a really cool science center. And my favorite thing about it is that it gives me the confidence to bring science communication to the unlikeliest of places. And this is my favorite pilot in the world. He thought it was so fun. Um, I was talking to him about whale sharks. 
And then I get to advocate for others who share my passion. So I'm the Oceania representative on the International Planetarium Society board, and I get to work with other planetariums around the world to make them better as well. Nowadays, what do I do? Nowadays, I get to do this. So I get to teach in Bachelor of Digital Screen at the University of Canterbury, which allows you to do any sort of digital screen, be it a game, a film, animation, whatever you want, and figure out where that path will take you, because it doesn't necessarily have to take you into a big film studio. Adjacent to that, I'm currently working with the Faculty of Arts to develop a new program, um, a master's in um, museum studies, which will be really exciting once that comes out as well. I do all sorts of stuff now, but I still love domes the best, and one day I will convince somebody to build one in Christchurch, and that's <laughs> going to be my thing. Um, so this stuff is all pretty cool, but how do you get into it? So for me, it's a big mix of art, tech, and science. So that degree in IT that I did, although maybe it seems a little bit distant now, is really the basis. Understanding technology has really helped me push what we do in terms of science communication and art. So, some advice for you guys. Keep asking why and don't worry about whether the question is stupid. It's not. The path is not always straight, but it's the detours where you guys have a lot of fun, so don't be worried about taking it. It's okay not to know everything, and sometimes it helps to be the dumbest person in the room. That's my favourite position to be because it means that I'm learning. Be passionate about what you love and others will love it too. Anytime you're communicating about something you really enjoy, other people will share your enthusiasm because it's nice to see people happy about things. Go with the flow. You never know where the tide will take you. You may not end up where you expect, but you might end up in a place where you can find you really, really happy. And I'm going to skip that one because that's going to be at the end. Thank you.